You are listening to the Fascia Guide, a podcast about the living body, about new research and a new perspective on health, pain and what it means to be alive. The Fascia Guide is a conversation between Hans Bolin, innovator and fascia expert, Per Johansson, doctor of human ecology and historian of science and ideas, and me, Axel Bolin. We have been talking about a lot so far. Why fascia, why we're interested in it, what fascia is, what fascia does, uh, why we are thinking the way we're thinking about the body and why fascia is not mainstream and why it's so hard for fascia to become mainstream and we've talked about the subject of of flow and how you begin to understand the complexity of the body in a simple way what we haven't really touched upon in a sense is what does it take for me to understand fascia and the living body what do i need to to start doing to understand this myself or how, how do i need to what approach should I have if I start to learn this? Because it is a little bit different understanding the living body, isn't it, Per? Yeah, certainly, it's very different because uh, uh, because it's living, and our usual, as we have said in some earlier earlier episode, our usual way of thinking is very much f- uh, focused on uh, concepts and and. Uh, and uh, certain words who are, that are name names for concepts like the body that's a concept mm-hmm. and uh, in our western tradition we have largely identified the body as a material object which means that it is studied as a material object and all the concepts we use to explore it uh, are also rather they don't move. That's the important point. Our usual concept, uh, which we use in in in, in our thinking, are are immo- immobile. They 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 don't. One one concept does not immediately. Uh, the meaning of one concept does not immediately, in a living, moving way, affect the meaning of other concepts we use so the concepts are immobile and uh, in, in a certain con- way which philosophers have, have philosophers of language have, have explored for a long time by by now but uh, the crux is that in in our conceptually focused way of thinking that is we focus how we think and what we think on the concepts and the names of concepts. That way of thinking has great difficulties uh, encompassing uh, living, living things, living creatures, living bodies, living animals, living human beings, because the what is characteristic of living everything that is alive uh, is that it, it it it's mobile <laughs> it, mm. it's it, you can't capture it in an immobile concept uh, you can only the only thing you really can capture within our usual conceptual way of thinking is uh, a certain basically artificial way of ordering things in order to make it possible to think about it very very clearly and logically but uh, it's uh, th- that way of thinking is designed to clear the structure of our thinking, you might say. But it is not designed designed to to be able to capture in our minds, in our imagination, when we think this way. It's not designed to capture the constant flow and changeability of everything that is alive so we need in order to uh, understand life and living creatures including ourselves we we really need another way of thinking focused not upon concepts but up at, upon uh, you you might say experience in a certain definite way we might come back to that yeah and i had two examples of how this is not it's not only in our way of thinking it's a problem on so many levels because i had one conversation with uh, jared pollack who um, has a lot of research on water and he said that he has experienced the same 
problem we have talked about in, in Fasher research that it's hard to understand the the living, the moving, the mobile, the ever changing aspect of a human body. It's the same thing with water because the the scientific method, the way you measure things, is you take something and then you repeat it. But the problem is with water is that it changes all the time. So you can't repeat it because the water is ever different. It's always change and that change doesn't fit inside the models and then I got another conversa- conversation with Sean Gilberto who's been um, filming living bodies and he said that I have been talking about the living body for year after year congress after congress convention after convention and no one understands it or it's so hard for people to grasp that it's alive that it's something different that it's a new paradigm that Maybe everything we're, we are thinking about the way we think about the body could be wrong because the living body is a totally different thing. And and that's in their spectrum. But you also have the, the thing we touch about, touched upon in the last episode that people uh, don't own the knowledge and feelings and perceptions of their own body that I, as a professional footballer, for example... I go to an authority so that they can tell me how I should feel and what I should do. Or if you have an illness, you go to someone else who should tell you something about your body based on the studying of other people's bodies. So we have a problem of of understanding that this is actually our living bodies right now affected by everything that we're doing. Hmm. But I think the the, the thing Jared Pollock said was that actually the scientific way we look at things uh, maybe not fit into the living body as it is um, because it's always changing and I think the first one I when I started looking at <laughs> I think the first one I was looking was actually a, a film called What What the Bleep Do We Know and, and it was about uh, Masaru Emoto and his ek, um, uh, research about water and water memory and, and what water was what it was it what what's happening with with water and he started up with one thing that everybody knows that every snowflake that that comes down to earth is unique so no snowflake is like another snowflake and and I'm from the northern part of Sweden and we have a lot of snow um, so for for me it was it was so mind blowing to see that everything is unique and snow is actually water. So, and we are actually mostly water. Uh, so I think to, 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 to grasp the uniqueness that the living body is, the uniqueness, the uniqueness and the same in, in, in the same, in the same moment. So, Usually, I think when you look at when you looked at uh, I I know, you know that better maybe pair, but when when they look at the genome on, on the human body and the the DNA, the exponent of the DNA, I think they said when the, the gene when they thought about the genes in 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 the early eighties or nineties, they said that I think they, they approximately had that we should have around was it one hundred twenty thousand genes or two hundred thousand genes. Because in different figures, yeah, but but because the banan fly has just nineteen thousand, and uh, yeah, then when they 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 look at the genes in a human tissue, the human, it's I think it's like twenty twenty nine or twenty eight thousand genes, not not more than a banana banana fly. Uh, so, uh, um, so we are quite. Uh, uh, we're, we're the same, so the living body is the same in, in instruction and, and and how it's built, or how it's, it's living, but also unique and always changing. And I think that's the hard thing to understand is that it can change so quickly, and and just to observe it, what happened. I think we have a pro- we had a program in in Sweden about Fasherguide in Sweden about breeding, and uh, Camilla. Uh, she read something about uh, a scripture from China about reading, about breeding, and how important breeding and and how important to observe observe how you breed and what you're actually doing. 
And then we, um, I started to see what happens if I read out, read in and read out uh, slower. So if I had like uh, four or five inhalations, breathe out and breathe in in one minute, what would happen with my heart rate, with my heart rate and with my blood pressure? And it's amazing. You can, you can actually reduce the blood pressure and the heart rate in in minutes and mm. and and you don't and then you can see what what would happen if i if i turn on the news and i see that it's a, it's a war somewhere it, it, the heart rate will, <laughs> it will increase so everything is living everything is is um, evolving around what 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 perception and what things am i uh, into and 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 that i think that's that's the hard thing if you if you see uh, how can um, if you look at the the living body as a whole and with everything? So, with everything I've been involved with, traumas and or or happiness or whatever, everything is in is is yes, I've been living in me, inside of me, or outside of me, and that's another perspective that's quite a, quite hard to to grasp for I, in modern science, I think, because it's. <laughs> it's so many specialists so many specialists involved in it but your your example of breathing i think is quite good because uh, in your own what you just related about your own experience uh, you you found that uh, by regulating your breathing in certain ways you could affect heart rate and blood pressure and uh, uh, how you felt yeah uh Perhaps not easily, but definitely quite clearly. So that's that's kind of knowledge hmm. which you have ga- gathered in, uh, by 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 experience, and and instead of basing how you think about the living body upon uh, some kind of system of concepts uh, involving oxygen and lung capacity mm. and uh, blood uh, circulation and whatnot that's a conceptual kind of thinking you could uh, you could try to understand what you experienced in your breathing exercises in that manner and that's a certain theoretical conceptual perspective on what you uh, experienced but it and uh, if you if you call that knowledge it's it's completely external to any experience mm. Uh, but at the same time, you ca- you cannot say that things having to do with oxygen absorption and heart rate and uh, all these quantitative and uh, molecularly based uh, kinds of understanding, you can't say that that's irrelevant to the understanding of breathing. So what is it? It's another perspective. So mm. you have now, by uh, you have two perspectives. You have the perspective of uh, your own experience and you have have the perspective of a theoretical uh, biological under, understanding. There's no sense in saying that one perspective is more correct or more true than the other. The only question is, for what purposes is this or the other perspective useful? Mm. So and and in order to understand the living body, I would say that the direct experience of the importance of breathing, breathing, is more useful to really understanding breathing than the conceptual knowledge. That statement does not mean that the theoretical un- understanding is not useful or irrelevant. What I'm saying is that I think that. If you can, if you understand that what you have, ha, what you're dealing with are not two incompatible ways of thinking, but nothing more than two perspect, two different per- perspectives, then you are free to choose which one is useful to you, depending on what your what you're doing, what your aim is. I have an, another example of this that maybe furthens our discussion on about this question like what does it take for me to understand this and actually apply it and 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 understand the living body in a sense 
So we had this this lecture that we had prepared on, on a user conference. We got a lot of uh, therapists and other health professionals at a, a weekend resort. And then we had a very... Um, very well made, very well, you know, uh, researched presentation with um, about breathing, uh, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, fascia, and um, circulation of blood. That that, that that system as well. So we had, we had that lecture, and it was I think it was a five hour presentation. It was quite um, quite extensive, and it was um, Camilla who's built the fascia research database. She was the one who held it, and we talked about all these systems and. Um, first we talked about so two things that were interesting was that we talked about breathing and the lungs and everything and then we talked about the nervous system and the the, um, the autonomic nervous system and how it works and then we talked about we showed all the blood vessels and then we showed the lymphatic system and then at the end we're like but do you see that it's like four different pictures and in all these pictures you think of it as four different systems but they're actually working together all the time they're, they're, it's not there's nothing that separates them they're in the same environment but, but we tend to look at them at different as different systems yeah that's a, that's a perfect example of con- conceptual thinking and so that was one thing so we were like hey guys stop a second and think about or feel that these are actually not separate system but the same system but different ways of looking at them so then that was like well, everyone's like oh yeah that's a that's a realization and then the breathing was the one that, that hit the hardest because we actually did some deep breathing also and people were fascinated about how how well it works, like how breathing actually is so beneficial for your stress levels or calmness or how it activates the autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system, and you, you can feel that in your body as soon as you take a deep breath. And some of, some people, of course, had a lot of extensive knowledge about breathing, so they were um, already, you know, um, they knew it. And then so everyone uh, said, I'm going to breathe more. Mm. And then the next event, we had the same group. And we, we just talked about, have you, have you done your breathing every day? And maybe 60-70% said they had. But then we talked about how many of you tell every customer you have that they should do breathing and then they sat and looked at each other and was like i don't do that and we were like why don't we, why do you not do that if this is so easy and so powerful and so important and so beneficial why are you not telling everyone to just breathe like as a first thing first treatment uh, between this treatment and next time I see you, do some breathing. It's simple. And then you remind them, did you do the breathing? No, I didn't. Okay, next time you can do it because it's good and start making it into a habit. And th- there's something there about how we how we can sit at a convention or we can watch a lecture or we can listen to a podcast or we can watch a video or we can read something and we're like, yeah, that really sounds well. And yeah, I'm going to think about that. And then we don't. And I've seen this so many times. There actually exists quite a lot of research, I think. Uh, I've seen some of it, at least, uh, which has studied the, from a physiological or a scientific physiological point of view uh, what happens when you deep breathe and do other But that's what the thing we showed. So the lecture yeah. was about that. And we had yeah, the, the yeah. references and everything. Uh, there's a lot of re- research about that. And what's, what's interesting in... in what we're trying to get at here is that um, you could say that that research confirms uh, scientifically the experience. But you can also turn it around and say the experience confirms the scientific research. And uh, uh, so, so that's an example of why you can't say that one person you have what you have here is two perspectives an experiential perspective and a scientific perspective and you can't say that one of them is better than the other the problem only occurs really if if you do as we often do in our our modern culture is that we 
we think the scientific understanding is in some strange way more valid and more important than the experiential understanding. Yeah. And I, I think it's, it, it's, the more I think about this, the stranger it gets, because it's, it's, it's so, in a way I can't understand how we can think that, be, be, because how can a theoretical understanding doesn't mean doesn't matter it could be quite valid in all theoretical respects and scientific respects mm -hmm. how can we regard that as a more valid knowledge than the actual experience of breathing properly mm -hmm. that is but a bit I, weird yeah but i think i think it's, it's a mystery it, it's 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 <laughs> sort of twisted and turned around and a, a kind of a sickness of, of, of our culture i, I think so, so we we have to sort of learn to to do a, a different kind of prioritization when we when we uh, want to learn how to think, also think about the living body. But I think, as, as I said before, I think the 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 problem is that everybody is is on the earth now is unique and i mean unique in the way of looking at, uh, at colors or everything that we are experience are unique if you have if you have a partner like i like i have i my wife been t together with my wife for 35 years um i can actually i can say that we live different lives we experience different things but we are in the same in the same in the same area at the same time and i think it's quite interesting to see that we are the same and, and been together so long time but we don't see things the same way and we actually don't do it and i i, I thought in another way it was quite interesting i i, I look at some programs about on, on how restoring cars and one 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 about restoring cars it's an english program and 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 they they restore old English or or old cars, um, could be European, could be American cars or, or English cars. And the interesting thing is that they have so it's quite uh, England is bigger than Sweden in in in, in population, but they have also a, a craftsman culture that still is alive. They have, they have so many things that they could do. So when you can restore a car from the fifties or sixties or seventies or thirties. They have to have knowledge, people, and and so and then the 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 it was a craftsman. He said that the thing with handmade things that they are always unique. Mm -hmm. You you can't do <laughs> you can't do two things that are the same. So when they did uh, uh, the re 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 restore a uh, 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 dashboard from the the uh, the car. Uh, with uh, and and they took material and it it was unique, and and the craftsmanship they had it was built on years of experience of doing manual things that we are do uh, that uh, that people are good to, that people are good to do it as we people are good to do manual things or or doing things manual with our, our hands or or creating things, and the thing I think we have in in Sweden we have just lost that kind of of uh, experience because we when when everything was in the in 90s or in the 80s we experience we export everything to china almost everything we did so we have and we have really good big companies in sweden there's not so many small companies really big companies so i think it's also a way of of um to see the body as a whole and see my experience my knowledge my way of doing things or my um, it's also a thing that's against culture um, mm. that we, we don't exactly. we don't accept that. Or if if uh, I think it's so interesting if I see a, a, a guy who's a guy a woman or guy who's really good at, at playing an instrument, I just puzzled. Mm. And, and if I see a young young man play or a woman playing the guitar, they, they it's a, amazing. And when you play drums, I mean you had a rock band. It, I was so impressed by that you play could play drums because it's <laughs> it's so many <laughs> things at the same time and so i think it's uh, i think 
the thing we are actually um, we, we are we are we are looking at not as machine like but maybe more like machines instead of 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 the dynamic um, unique living entities but but it's also we had we have a mis misperception of where knowledge lives because we as we talked about in the i think it was the fourth episode or the fifth episode we talked about aristotle and how yeah. how every how re- the real valuable knowledge is actually outside of us it's in it's in scripts or it's in uh, it's in text and words and books and literatures and, and and now we have the research report so like the the valuable knowledge about something is in the re- actual report it's not inside the person but if you instead look at yourself as a as a vessel that fills up with knowledge something different happens uh, and one example where where this is still so um so tangible is um, the craftsmanship as you said mm. because for example i i've moved into a new house and we have decided to make some changes in the house as you do when you move into a new house and want to make it feel as ours and one thing is that the we needed to isolate the the outhouse where we store tools and and uh, stuff basically, and uh, so that in in winter it doesn't get too cold because it gets if it gets too cold clothes are um, uh, destroyed. So it needs to be uh, certain temperatures. You need to isolate it. And when we did that, we were like, should we hire someone to do it or should we do it ourselves? Well, we should do it ourselves because it's good and we couldn't afford to hire one. But um, then my wife's cousin came, and he is a he's a constructor constructor and an constructional engineer and an architect. So he has like both sides of of building things, both drawing things and actual building things, and and that. And he has done a lot of work at his home, so he's he's really professional in that sense. And I remember when we did that because it was so easy. It was so easy to isolate this this building because he was like, well, you do this, and then you do this, and then you do this, and you do that, and here's the thing, and here's the cut, and here's the uh, measures, and here's that, and you put in, and we have this, uh, we have this type of screws over here, and this type of screws over here, and then we have, this goes up there, and that goes down, you do that, you do that, then next step is this, and this, and that. And we did it, and it looks great, and then my neighbor came, and he like, said like, can I hire you to do this at my place? And I was like, yeah, of course, I know I've done this now, so <laughs> how hard can it be? But then I, I, I thought about the process we just went through, and I realized that I was the muscle. I, I just did what I was told by someone, and then I studied him when he when he worked, and I saw that he was actually figuring things out based on the experience of yes, building similar things, mm. uh, because he has done it so many times. And then I remember when I I laid a, a floor, like, like a click floor in my old apartment, uh, and I you know you you measure something and then you you saw it and then you put it in there and it's like two millimeters wrong and you have to go out and do it again and then you put it in but then you put out too much and then you need to take a new one and you need to do that and now i did my kitchen it's the same thing it's like because i i haven't used my my saw more than maybe 50 times but he has so used what we're it. Saying, what we're saying really is that you have to go about understanding the living body, especially your own living body, mm-hmm. in the same way. Yes, and when in you an have analog- done it. analogous way. Yeah, and when you have done it a couple of times, it's much easier. And it's the same thing when I learned to play the drums. I, I, I knew how to do it, but to actually do it, and then to do it without thinking about it. And when you're, when you're, when you're playing in a concert in front of 300 people and you're in the middle of a song, uh, you kind of play the song the same time you're thinking about what comes next and the same time you're thinking about what the other people are doing and the same time time, uh, the same time you're living it experiencing it and doing it and this is something that people actually are doing and it it's you can same thing with cooking you can see if someone is a really good chef and it's not like Okay, Jamie Oliver, you do that cooking in 15 and 30 minutes, but in your book, 50 minutes cooking, that doesn't take me 15 minutes. <laughs> There's so many 15 minute recipes in his 15 minute recipe books that mm-hmm. takes 45 minutes mm-hmm. because he does it so much quicker and he does it better and he knows the recipe by heart and he knows what happens when you add too much of that spice over there or when the oven works like that over there because it's, it's the knowledge is inside his body. Mm. And when we 
don't realize that bod- that body is inside of us, we miss something. Because when I know that recording a podcast, having a lecture, talking about fascia, building a business, talking about things, being in a meeting, I know that I have the knowledge to do this inside of me, then I don't have to prepare. Then I don't have to uh, think about what I'm going to say. I can just use my experience and then use it. Mm. And that's why I think we should, if we move the knowledge inside the living body, it's easier to understand how it works. If you think it as something we have. Well, I think the, also, uh, the, the problem to understand fascia, that's the, to understand it yourself and how, wh- why it's so hard to understand it. I think it's about perspective because it's so different. So when we when we educate uh, people in doing, usually the people that come to us are skilled uh, manual therapists, but with the wrong perspective. So then it's like training them to understand another perspective. And that's that's not easy. So I I I I, I, <laughs> I was a fascia research congress 2015. Now I have uh, been discussing with with, uh, with veterinarian because veterinarian is quite interesting because they actually observe observe the animal and try to figure out what's wrong with the animal because the animal doesn't speak. So therefore, it's interesting to see. Uh, a veterinarian compared to a, f- a doctor, a physio, f- a doctor, because you, uh, 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 you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know everybody, but the the, the 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 medicine practice we had in Sweden, you meet a doctor and they don't so don't do so much of of palpation on the on the on the on the patient, but veterinarian d- does that, so. And I tried to 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 explain the veterinary I had. But she she was really as I said that you can learn to palpate the fascia. How? How? Um, because you 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 can palpation. You you can ex- you can palpate the muscle. Yes. Then you can can palpate the fascia. How? <laughs> so, <laughs> Explain to me step <laughs> by step. <laughs> and I did, and I said, and it's it's so different because uh, can you feel the the uh, the tension now and how it's moving? Where? <laughs> so it's uh, because <laughs> if you if you're stuck in a perspective that everything is separated, then it's quite hard to to understand to to actually. But she was trained to train her to feel other different things or to see different things as we had we had did now for we tried to see can we how can we look at a horse uh, and see unbalance and balance or can we balance a horse so we we can we can do we can look at the horse and we can palpate it and we can so look at the posture and how the, the horse is looking and then we can treat the horse and we can change everything uh and then I was sitting about how, <laughs> what, what, what's the, what's the, what's the kind of of uh, technique or or um, or machines or devices, uh, what shall we use? And we try to use a way a, 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 a Swedish invention that they c- can see uh, the the. Um, uh, you dis- film the horse and the, you yeah, see the disalignments with with the horse. Yeah. But it was too complex. So the easiest way was when we saw it was actually to see uh, how is the posture on the horse, on the whole horse, to 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 see the whole horse and to see, okay, if it's if it's too much pressure on the on the on the front, uh, on the right front, where is this going, and what can we do, and how can we treat it, and how can we release the pressure in that area and that's actually more of it's quite easy if you see the perspective it's quite hard if you don't see the perspective so if you don't see the living body as a whole and everything is interconnected at the same time uh, then it's it's not easy the, the interesting with with um, uh, uh, veterinarian or the, the people who do animals but they call because they look at the the, this the uh, firm and the and the everything the eyes and and the the um, the feet and everything because they observe everything but how they actually do the conclusions it depends on what kind of perspective they look at so I think 
Farsia from uh, my perspective is, I, I, I think it's, sometimes I think it's quite easy and sometimes I think it's extremely complex because if you have, if you have, you can actually see, you can have, have actually have things that physical in the body that you can't get rid of by treatment if the if the physical component is due to a process that you have be, or a, a trauma or something that you have been into and you don't get rid of it you can't get rid of it. then then you have a that, that's psychology but that's an experience that's that's so hard that's so um so cemented in the body so concrete in the body that you can't take away the the uh, the uh, wound or the the thing in the body without taking away the, the experience at the same uh, or releasing the experience at the same time that's not always that that case but it can be and that's the, then you are if you look at the living body and, and you see it, everything uh, that your experience is actually inside it's it's in the body uh, that's a that's a really in fascia way it's it's if you, you see in the fascia perspective and, and you see the, the fourth phase of water everything, that's actually not uh, not hocus pocus. It's actually it's 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 sad. it's how it is. It's anatomy and it's 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 um, it's concrete. It's it's solid. It's a solid way of looking at the, at the living body, but it can be spooky or <laughs> or it can be strange. It's you have to include all the factors at the same time. And the thing is that when you have a... The way we are used to understanding things is one thing at a time. But if you look, for example, at that image, hmm. you can see everything at the same time. So even if you're not aware of what you're seeing, your eyes can see everything at the same time. That's, the, that's something I'm... We have a weird way of um, understanding our own senses because if I take for example a, a camera mm. I can use the one of the best cameras there is and take a picture of a beautiful sunset mm. but seeing the beautiful sunset with my actual eyes will always be a so much better experience mm. like it's it's so the what my eyes can see like how much I can zoom with my eyes is not the same that what you can do through a medium, like for, through a camera. Mm. So there's always, we have a, a way of, a pres- a, our way of perception is much more advanced than we think. But what, what's also interesting in terms of the of this subject, where we, what, what does it take to understand this? Uh, when people see, like if you're that veterinarian, and you actually see those pictures of the horse's posture, or like we have done since um, 2010, we have taken pictures of people's pos- posture and mm. showed it to them. Mm. And then I, I see my own posture and I'm like, do I really look like that? And then I point to something like, can you see that your arm is lower than your other arm? Mm. And they are like, yeah, I can see that. I have never thought of it before. I can look at myself in the mirror all the time, but I haven't noticed this. It's like when you're when you're pointing out, um, there, there's like if you if you take a a, a, a f- f- movie that you think is perfect, and then someone points out a flaw in that movie, that could be forever ruined or that could be forever changed. Then you you, you have to if you can't unsee it. If you have seen it, you can't unsee mm. it. And that's the uh, I think that's something we need to do if we want more people to be interested in the living body to understand it is to to show them things that they can't unsee, to get them interested in a, in a way, or realize something that they haven't realized. Like we, what we've done with the images, when we take the picture of someone, show he, this is how you look, and people say, do I look like this? It's harder to forget that than it is to forget um, reading about posture or listening to a lecture on posture. When you see yourself, it's, you remember it more. Hmm. If you breathe yourself, you remember it more than if you hear me have a lecture on breathing so it's it's something with the experiences the, not just thinking about it but seeing feeling touching hearing uh, tasting that is more um that makes us remember it more mm-hmm. yeah i think the importance of what you've been saying now is that 
in order to get uh, a good basis for understanding the living body, starting with your own, is to combine your experience with observing things, observing how you react, observing yourself externally, and then also uh, in relation to other people, you can observe other people, you can uh, experience your contacts with other, other people, and, and on an abstract level you could say that a really good basis for knowledge about life and living the living body is to to consciously develop experience uh, develop and think from the basis of a combination of experience and observation and uh, including in, in all kinds of intuitions and uh, Interestingly enough, that is how uh, science is supposed to work. Science is a, 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 is a, pra a pragmatic, uh, empirical endeavor, really, concerned with, with observations and experiments and trying to figure out and describe and understand w what does this observation mean? What does this experience me mean? How do these experiences relate to these observations? And then you express this in more uh, uh, in, in some uh, theoretical way. This means that the theory is based in experience and observation. Uh, so, so it it, it uh, it's based in uh, empirical knowledge. You could could say uh, that's. Uh, but but what has happened uh, is that even scientists have often lose lost touch with this all important facet of of understanding and 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 also scientific knowledge and sort of got stuck in uh, the so far established theoretical frameworks which are conceptual so uh, at a certain stage it seems it seems that many, many many people including including scientists start to think from the basis of the established theoretical descriptions rather than from the way these descriptions historically have developed which is if it's science it's based on uh, uh, observations and experience and uh, tests and uh, experiments and uh, whatnot so so this is this is also a very strange uh, characteristic of our time is that you always hear that you should trust the science and you sh science is, is the way to know things and, mm -hmm. and but m less and less people seem to be aware of what science really entails which is uh, it entails and means that you strive for an adequate realistic knowledge based once again upon upon experience and observation and experiment mm -hmm. and theories grounded in observation and experience mm -hmm. not science is not uh, really about uh, thinking in the right way or adhering to the correct theory or anything like that mm -hmm. but that is what it has become more and more these days and this is also so something which uh, hinders uh, uh, an adequate approach to understanding the living body. Mm -hmm. I think well, I think we talked about yeah, I think I was talking about it yesterday. I, I, I didn't I think we're talking to you actually I, I didn't get a manual about how my body is working. I didn't get a manual of how my mind works either. So the problem I think we have is is that we we and you didn't get a background story like no. <laughs> what your parents thought when they brought no, you up, no, or what society you were brought I, I up didn't, in. I didn't get that, that either. It, so it's 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 like we we're like uh, stranded in in a, in a different kind of, of space that we're in, in, and we don't understand anything how we got how we got here. What am I doing here? What's the purpose of life? Uh, how does my body work? How how does I think? The interesting way of, of experience um, 
uh, your body and your wholeness or your living body is to get treatment or get to meet someone that could reflect uh, what you've been what you've been doing. I did I did a, a thing with a with a customer a, a, a woman I treated just for a couple of days ago and and I wanted to adjust her pelvis and to see but the thing was that she she was stuck in a way of 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 looking herself she was not living her own body she was living in another she was um, living someone else's s- life yeah in 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 many different ways but it's hard to understand it's hard to explain for the woman who's live, li- li- lying there on the bench that maybe you should wake up and, and take care of your own life not not do so many things about other lives but but be your take your be be your first your first uh, be, be take care of yourself first and love yourself first and then but then i i i think maybe i can do see if if i can get her to feel her own body and see if he, she can do the um, adjustment of the one of, one way of just the pelvis by herself so then you can do the synthesis. You can just touch it really soft, uh, and then you can change the pressure on on the synthesis. And, and I put her hands on the synthesis, and 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 my my hands on what do do you feel any change? Yes, it's higher on the, on the left side. Okay, can you can you make a little bit pressure on it and see if you can change it? And it actually that did, and she was so happy because yes, yes, I can feel it now. I can feel it now, and then. Then, then, then she she adjusts the body herself. So, and that for 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 her it was an epiphany to see that I'm alive and and my body is alive and I can change things. And I think mm-hmm. the the problem is to see is to to understand how uh, how the living body is always adjusting for everything. As I from the beginning, the the uh, the breathing can change the blood blood pressure and the blood pressure is 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 due to the 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 environment, the orion and the heart and everything. So everything is is due to blood pressure and and the heartbeat. You can change it and you can change if you change your breathing, and you change your heartbeat and you change your blood pressure. You 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 get another perspective. If if you change your, you can actually be. It's like in the matrix. You can actually like. It's like looking at uh, Agent Vatan, Agent Anderson. No. Yeah. Oh, Agent Smith. Agent Smith. In the Smith. Matrix. No, in the Matrix. You, you, he, oh. She look at he look at Agent Smith, and and he's like slow. So if if you if you if you breathe, and 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 lower your blood pressure and lower your your heart rate, then you can actually get another perspective of people, of of animals, of the living life, because everything stops down, and you get more present. So it's also a way of of. of Discovering, oh, can I change my senses? Oh, can I can I change see things in another way? And I think also a way you can that we train people to do is to feel, to feel the the, the connective tissue and the fascia and everything how it's moving and and what's 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 the flow in the body? Where is the tension? Where does it go? And that's that's really strange, because we haven't been taught that. But if you look at, uh, for instance, I look when when we what do you call it when you put brick when you put bricks of of cement to people uh, when you do a when you're building a wall we are building a wall with cement and and bricks, and we I saw we had many uh, friends that did that so we're really good at uh, craftsmanship in in just uh, doing cement and bricks and it's amazing to see when they do them when they do it because it looks so easy. And then you do it yourself and you're like, oh. Yeah, and then you try to do it yourself and it's not so easy. But uh, to, to to actually feel things and do things, that's the way I think 7 to 80 percent of the people is is uh, if if you look at the other, uh, if you look at I think it's 50 percent of the brain is connected to the hands. Mm. So we are actually born here to be physical to feel things. Uh, but if you if you don't if to to understand the, the the living body is actually to feel and to to take in things that are coming your way, and if if we have a scientific perspective that are more 
not machine like but but uh, we 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 try to take away everything that could be placebo and then you have also a uh disqualification of that kind of of measurement or that kind of perspec- perspec- per- perception as Pollock said at the yellow Pollock it's it's hard to to do a scientific experience on water because it's everything is changed all the times so i think uh i think i think it it it's a paradigm shift as gimbert say, says and you have to to um you have to discover it yourself uh, and maybe i think the, the the thing that's driving the fascia way i think it's yoga and and other things that that's coming because then you can tr- try to learn to to uh, move your body and your breathe, breathe uh, breathing and see what's happened you can actually change your whole body in way of, of conducting things and i think you have the same in chinese medicine or in other areas that you you look at the body in another way and and um, i think yeah do you want to hear a very humbling um thing yeah <laughs> so we're we're talking here we're in in a podcast episode recording and it says what does it take to understand fascia and living body that's the subject we're discussing yeah. and this is a subject that we've been <laughs> discussing for more than 10 years like yeah. uh, and the, the three of us has discussed it for at least five years yeah. <laughs> and it's something that we have been talking about thinking about and we've developed new ways of doing it and pu- published new articles and mm-hmm. and uh, videos and, and episodes we've done over 130 podcast episodes in swedish discussing mm-hmm. the subject and i just realized that i'm still doing some th- some things that are crazy in terms of understanding the living body so what we are discussing here is how do you how you understand life and the living body and that it's not it's not separated Hmm. separation is a concept that we have learned that's actually not true there is no separation which means that if you have a principle that says something like a principle um of flow or a principle of simplicity it goes it it goes it is is always the same it's Hmm. it's in in every aspect of everything but here I am sitting thinking about how do we explain what it takes for a person to understand their own living body. And I'm thinking about how you spark curiosity in people. How do you get people excited about the body? How do you, what can you send them or show them or, or give to them so that they uh, get that experience that, that gets them interested, that changes things. And then I just realized that we have... We have certified 300 fascia therapists and developed a, a, an education to do exactly this. And I never thought to bring that up. Like I, I had separated that experience of teaching someone to become a manual therapist and a th- mm. fascia therapist. I had separated that. I had separated that from learning to understand the body as a person. Mm. And and then that's just an example of how. Even though we've been sitting here, I'm still separating things because I don't think of it in mm-hmm. as the same thing. But then I realized that in that in that educational process that we have developing that program, you said that we, we usually have already trained manual therapists that know how the body works and there's a challenge with um, rethinking in terms of fascia. Mm-hmm. But we also have people who've never before uh, treated someone who's never learned a, a name of a muscle, who never learned anything about the body, also going through this course. And they also have troubles understanding fascia, but in a different sense. But when we do that, we always start with saying, you should trust the process, that this is a learning process that you will understand. If you do it time from time again if you try to feel it if you you do it once you don't feel it you do it again you don't feel it you do it third time you don't feel it the fourth time you feel something the fifth time you feel something mm. the, the sixth time and then the the fiftieth time you uh, you think how could i not feel this all the time mm. so it's when you grow as you learn things and it's the same if you're building a, a, a kitchen or if you're learning to, to feel the body or if you start learning to cook or taste it's the the process is is a learning process. You are not the same person when you start 
that kind of course uh, than in the middle, than in the end. And the people who have experience understanding body or treatment, or, or uh, they, they struggle with the new perspective that we talked about here. The people who don't have any experience find it easier to understand the living perspective, but harder to understand the, the specific body parts and how that works. And around the, the middle of the course, uh, for everyone it's like, and then they just get it. And then a new level of excitement comes in because now they understand something. But it happens because they also do it among other people. So they have other people around mm. them that gets them... Uh, because if you're doing it all alone, you don't know if you're on the right track, but if you're doing it as a group or with other people, you can see yourself to them mm. and you can you can talk about your experience. And then we notice another thing is that when we when we put up strolling under the skin on a big screen while they are doing treatments. So strolling under the skin is the Chantal Gimbertos uh, video about living tissue. So they see the living tissue on a video. It's much easier for them to feel it mm. when they do treatment. So it, treatment changes when they start seeing the body in that sense. So it's it doesn't really matter if you're trained or not trained. It's more about understanding that it's a process it's um, um, of course you need a desire to actually learn it and you need the curiosity and, and, and those things but it's 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 going down that path start thinking in that sense start training it, it's it's not something you you just learn I mean we're on a 13 year long process of trying to understand this mm. and we still haven't understood it fully Mm. We, will ne we never will, probably. Uh, I think one important thing you, you just said is that uh, how is the answer to the question, how do you learn from experience? Well, you, uh, you focus on what you're desiring to learn, and then uh, you do what needs to be done in order to, uh, to, to, to understand it. And you do it again and again and again and again, and during that time when you do do something you want to learn really learn again and again and again during during much of that time it feels like you don't understand anything and you don't learn anything and then then suddenly it all comes together and ah hmm. now i get it but you you you, you would never have have, have had arri have arrived to the, at that point if you hadn't been doing it again and again and again so so and this uh, i think also is a weakness in uh, much uh, education nowadays that it, it's it, it's based on a kind of misapprehension uh, that uh, says that if you learn the facts and the co correct theoretical way of conceptualizing something then you don't have to do it again and again and again you don't have to experience it you you, you can s just sort of download download it mentally and then you know mm. what it, what it, it, it's about and and very t m too much education especially more theoretically inclined education uh, uh, is uh, seems to work that uh, in, in that way, and and uh, uh, so so it's it, it's it's a kind of, this the the, uh, the fixation on theoretical knowledge I think is also due to sheer laziness, actually. You think you can you can do some kind of shortcut in order to understand something by by understanding it only theoretically and conceptually and by means of, of lists of, of facts. But I think it's a trend that that we are um, that's I explained with the car industry or the the, the how to man as a manufacturer the or that in the, in England with with so many craftsmanship that's still in in work and in progress so they are they're business doing it I think we are in a way of we try to do everything theoretically uh, even in in, uh, in sports it's you cannot theoretically but many things you do with the body is you actually have to do it you have to practice to do it you can't you can't learn to play tennis if you don't play tennis you can't learn to to climb a mountain if you don't climb a mountain if you don't climb um so everything is is a skill, and you have to train it. And and uh, 
I think you have a, the, the, the big thing in, 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 in to understand the body is it's, it's always communicating with us. And uh, I think the problem is, is, is how to listen to it, how to try to, to feel and listen it, to it. Yeah, and, and listen and, and listen and listen and listen. <coughs> yeah, and listen and listen and listen and see see you, what 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 you can learn about it, and 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 actually, uh, as as I said, you're actually in command of your own life and own your own body. It's your life. You're the master. You're the 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 unique person, and um, uh, and th- that's the cool. I think it's nice what you said that everything is a skill. Mm. because skill skill is a good word because it's something that we train it's something that we get better at and the th- the thing with skills that's so um cool is that the more you do it the less effort it takes mm. because if you look for example when we when we when we dug into the breathing I looked at all the research on breathing and and things like that um we talked about the how much people breathe with their mouth uh, compared to breathe with their nose and how much better it is to breathe, breathe with your nose And then the breathing with the nose is actually something we have trained not to do. And you can see it on, on how skulls have developed uh, throughout the last 300 years. Uh, and we're, same thing, we're not chewing as much as we did or should do to, to be healthy. Um, and then you can say like, oh, you should do this breathing exercise and that's the thing. But the, the thing is to, to breathe so much with your nose that after a while you're not thinking about that it that you're breathing with your nose that it's natural to be with your nose so change changing that behavior developing a skill to nose breathe will make you always breathe with your nose and then you don't have to think about it you don't have to think about nose breathing because it's natural same thing with chewing if you if you always chew after months or years you will always chew mm. a lot a lot And and you get out of the habit of of uh, swallowing without chewing too much. So it's it's everything we're doing is a skill. The same way as just playing drums is skill, uh, walking is a skill, or running is a skill, or or breathing is a skill, or looking at something in a certain way is a skill. To always try and see no, the but, simple thing is a skill. I, I, as as Per say, we, we 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 never understand life because when we talk about the the. Uh, the well-being of of the blue zones the, where people live lo- longer uh, then when they, when they try to look at that then then they actually live different they don't stress so much they eat more they run more they, 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 it's it's a stressful it's a non-stressful environment and that's you can't do copy paste on on the food and and the and that and that and that and you don't have the the environment or the, the the way of living and i think if if you look at uh um if you look at what what they saw in all natural people before uh the eskimos and the indians and so on they didn't find any cancer at all it, it's they, they were they, they had other diseases but not cancer so many diseases we have maybe are due to our way of living and and uh i think it's it can be really hard to understand life when but baby were uh, in in ways before maybe we were closer to life or to living or to being uh, as they are in the blue zones uh, and and so <laughs> Life is complex, and fascia is complex, and and the body is complex. But it's it's also quite easy if you understand how you shall take care of your body and how you shall be yourself. And for those who are not um, very familiar with the blue zones, there are areas in the world in uh, Sardinia and Italy, in Greece, in some parts of Japan and India, where people just don't get sick. Mm. So they live to a very old age, and they don't have the same amount of diseases that we have in the rest of society. So people have studied what they're eating and how they're living and how they're doing. But as you said, the focus is on, like, can we eat as they do? But it's also in Sardinia, for example, there are people who are 95 years old and they climb mountains with goats and they eat cheese and big lunches with, and dinners with their families and they just don't never stress. And they they, they, smoke, smoke, and they, they smoke. even smoke cigarettes <laughs> yeah. and they're still <laughs> healthy because everything around it is mm. also central to it. But, but to sum it up, um, 
Per, what does it take to understand fascia in the living body? Well, as as <laughs> uh, as should have been become obvious by now, there is no single clear answer to that question. Uh, but it, it 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 depends on on who you are asking. If you are if you are asking some scientifically inclined person, or if you are asking just anyone who is interested in understanding his himself or herself. Mm. Uh, so the answer becomes uh, different. Uh, I, I think if you if you're talking about uh, anyone living, uh, the basis uh, must be what we have said in different ways in this episode and also in other episodes. The basis must must be that you have to learn and train yourself to observe and experience yourself what you're actually feeling and how you're actually re- re- reacting to things without thinking about it uh, un- until you have really op- find that you sort of observe uh, <laughs> I-, I hesitate to say correctly but but you 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 it, it's like when you learn a language uh, I remember when I, I, for many years ago, I got into my head that I had to learn Biblical Hebrew because of my interest in the history of ideas. Uh, And the Bible is very important. And if you you want to understand the Bible, you have to learn to read it in the original languages, which is in Hebrew in the Old Testament and Koine Greek in the New Testament. So I started to to, um, take courses in Biblical Hebrew. And uh, first I had to learn uh, the alphabet, and then I had to learn basic grammar, and then I had to learn a lot of uh, words. And uh, I remember the f- for the first two or three months, I really didn't understand <laughs> anything. <laughs> Literally. I just had to cram things into my head. I had to cram into my head the alphabet, I had to cram into my head the words, I had to cram into my head basic uh, grammatical structures and I didn't understand I did I really didn't have any experience of understanding anything mm-hmm. and then suddenly one day it sort of popped and what aha <laughs> ah, aha that's how it that's how it works mm-hmm. and and I, I this might seem a, a very idiosyncratic example, but I, I think it's it, this is typical for any any kind of learning. And if you mm-hmm. if you want to learn to observe yourself, and if you want to learn how to experience what you're actually experiencing consciously, then you ju- you, you you just ha- it's it's difficult and simple. The simplicity is in that you don't have to think about it; you mm-hmm. just do it. And you do, you don't have you you shouldn't think that I must understand it. And uh, now I've been observing myself for one month. And I don't understand anything. Well, never mind that you don't understand. Just continue observing, and then one day, hmm. next year, you will find that it dawns upon you. Aha! That's that's why I react in this way. Aha! That's why I feel like this. So, so, uh, and I think we we are much too hasty in our search for understanding. We have mm. to be patient. No, I I love that example because it actually sums sums it up. Because I have some few words that I wrote down about that process. So first of all, there's a curiosity. Like, could I understand something differently if I learn Hebrew to read read the Bible in original language? That's like the first idea, the curiosity. And then you have the desire because you need a lot of desire to <laughs> to start yeah. that kind of process because it's like it's not everyone who does it. So you need that desire, and then it's the commitment. I'm mm-hmm. actually going to do this because it's you can always back down, you can always stop it, and and you need to the commitment to follow through, and you need to be humble uh, towards yourself and the process and everything that's going, and you need patience, as you said, to uh, to that it takes time and also trust that it will happen because if you don't trust that you actually will learn it someday 
then what is the point of keep going on? So you need you need that that idea of it. And and if you look at the principles as something that goes, it it's not just related to one subject or one thing. It's actually principles that goes in everything. So if you want to learn something, you need even if it's learning the fascia, or if it's learning to build a house, or if it's learning to understand economics, or if it's learning to understand anything, you need the curiosity to spark your own desire. Then you need that desire to be strong enough to push through. Then you need the commitment that you're actually going to finish it. You need the humbleness that you have to probably change the way you think, or the way you are, or your opinions, or or your ideas. You need patience that it will take time, and you need trust trust in that you will find the answer eventually, that it will come to you eventually. And that actually, I think, describes the learning process. Mm, yes. Mm. So that that's, uh, would would be one way of briefly answering the question how, how you can learn to understand uh, the living body by yourself. Uh, if I would very briefly say something uh, to a, a more uh, scientifically, scientifically inclined Persons, I would say that uh, one part of the necessary paradigm shift in relation to understanding fascia, uh, uh, as I see it, uh, is t- you have to um, think less in terms of uh, biochemistry and more in terms of other areas of scientific knowledge. Uh, really basic physics mm. like if if one of the uh, functions of fascia is to load and unload pressure there's a whole, whole branch of classical physics physics really which mm. applies also you have to understand flow you uh, then fluid dynamics and and um, such things uh, uh, becomes important and uh, also uh, electricity Hmm. and and uh, very much uh, natural scientific research on the body is is not focused on basic physics it's not focused on the an uh, adequate understanding of uh, electricity and magnetism uh, which is to me uh, as a non physicist is is quite curious because i always thought that uh, classical physics and uh, electrodynamics and things like that isn't that very basic physics mm. how can you if you want to understand the body as 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 a as a kind of material living structure how can you ignore those fields mm. so that i think is part must be part of the, of of a scientific paradigm shift in relation to fascia mm.